After that, yeah, hello. You're right. Well, one of the, we've got to agree who's going to talk, haven't we? Yeah, you uh, can, and we agreed it was you. That's why I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> now, you do believe we didn't have a rehearsal for this as well, did you? We didn't. <laughs> no point doing that, is there? <laughs> but it's funny, I wanted to start with um, a few things. I, I, I've been out to a trade show in the last couple of weeks, and oh, yes. um, I've met real actual people, not just people on the internet. Uh -huh. um, and um, they sort of, some of them even watch this as well. So it's not just our families watching anymore. There's actual other people Probably watching. Not. I know. And they said, where do you get your ideas from to do these LinkedIn live sessions? They're really, really good. Where do you, where do you come up with them? Oh. And I said, I, I, no, that's not what I said. I said months and months of careful planning goes into each session. Um, and then I told them the truth. I said, really, it's just based on real life and stuff we see, <laughs> which is basically where, where, where this stuff comes from. It's things that you see happening in the world and things like that. So today we are doing unlocking productivity and savings via layout optimization and ganging. Uh, that's what marketing called it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I read that out. <laughs> what does it actually mean, David? Well, so let's take it back into the real world, shall we, of stuff that, that we've uh, maybe seen. So imagine you are a printer and you're getting a pile of orders in from places. So mm -hmm. seen, seen this, um, orders maybe from websites, maybe just from customers. And you need to make some money and some margin. So you've got lots and lots more orders than you would have had five years ago. And yeah. you need to try and improve your margin wherever you can. Margins are tight. You've heard about the energy crisis, paper prices, all those kind of things. So what you might want to do as a printer is group and gang some of your orders together, mightn't you? And just try and make some efficiencies up. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we want to start looking at things today. Of, so we're going to talk about production to start off with when we're, we're doing that sort of thing. Yeah? We're going to talk, talk about production because um, estimate is estimate. You, you know, you try and win your work and put in your best price for stuff. But this is where you can start making up a margin compared to somebody else. If you can start being clever about how you gang and group stuff. And... Um, you and I have both been in factories, make sure that they end up in the right place at the end of it. Yeah, that's the tricky bit, yeah. <laughs> that's the other fact. But not every factory is going to be geared up for quite some of this yeah. stuff um, <laughs> that we've been in those places. Um, but but some places are really geared up for this and really, really clever about how, how they do that stuff. So we're going to go through the process of, so shall I give you an example that I've seen somewhere? Would that be good? Or are you going to go straight well, into the deep Tell you what, you give me the example and I'll tell you if that's what I've prepared or not. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we've had some places that we've been to that have sort of, uh, they get all these online orders from their website, which has nothing to do with us. Yeah. And then it pings something and then they like to get all their jobs out because I think they went all out by DHL or Parcel Force or something like that, all on the five o'clock courier. Yeah. So they've got that sort of demand and they were doing a lot of that manually, weren't they, by eyeballing all the jobs and trying to work out and trying to get them all out of the business. But we've got what we think is a... a solution. That's what we, solution. A solution. Good solution. That's what we have. Shall I show Go you some on. of the solution then? Go on, there's so many solutions. Okay. Let's, let's start then. I'll, I'll share my screen out and we'll uh, we'll go from there. So you've got you've got the screen now. And actually, I should say another thing as well. You're not talking to David right now either. Just am I not? Just, yeah. No, I I know. I've got a new name for for the moment. I'm called API. Ah, um, so strange. if you don't if you don't know what an yeah. API, well, it's an acronym. So it stands for an automated programming interface, and it basically means uh, I'm just a computer program, just like ones and zeros. So what I'm doing here um, as an API is I'm looking for jobs that are on the same kind of material that have got the same kind of dispatch date and I'm going to stick them together in a gang of jobs. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to okay, so, so the fundamental rule is they're all, well, you're going to print them all up together or something. Yeah? That's what you want to try and achieve. Yeah, they're all in the same material. Um, okay. So because all the same material, I want to, I want to group them. I want to, I want to make sure I run, run them all completely together. Um, so I've got my little uh, gang job up here. And I'm just going to ask the system to remake it in the best way possible. So, like, I put them together into the group, and I say, "Go yeah. and go and re-estimate effectively." Because when you estimated them, you didn't know you're going to run them together. Now you do. 
go and group the things that should be together together and take the other things apart that, that aren't going to be together. So it doesn't just need to be it doesn't just need to be online orders either, do it? Because it could you no. could take into account some standard estimates that you've done and convert it to jobs as well. Yeah. Yeah, they could be they could be anything that you want to group, uh, anything you want to group up together. So gives you a load of messages of what it's doing, ganging things up, grouping things, uh, grouping things through together. And then I'm just going to go and submit it on into production. And my task as an API is now finished. So, okay. so basically, why you're Mr. Mr. Is it Mr. API? Uh, Mr. API, please. Yes. Mr. Yeah. Okay. While you're Mr. API, all of that would be handled through code, what you've just done there. Yeah. Yeah. But it would have been a bit boring if we just had the code sat there and just chucked it at the screen. So well, we did, we, you know, we did debate it a little bit of saying, what if we just um, said, here's what we did? But we thought, no, we probably should show what the thing actually oh. does. And and believe it or not, you could do it manually as well if you want to. So, oh, yeah. um, so just because I was the API today doesn't mean I didn't do it manually. So what's that spider's web on the screen? So the spider's web on the screen is is basically a way of these little numbers here relate to the upstream dependencies. So this is like customer approves their artwork and it goes into this gang form. Customer approves okay. this artwork goes into this form. And and basically I'm I'm doing some pre-press cutting, printing some stuff, cutting it. And all those jobs together are now ganged up and same kind so, of thing happens. So going completely off script like I usually do. So you could only look at approved jobs if you wanted to when you wanted to do this sort of thing. Because you could filter it down to that sort of thing. You could too. Um, do you know I'm almost prepared for you going completely off script today. So right. let me just let me just take you. That's I'm going, unfortunate. I'm equally going to take you completely off script. So um, where I began, you know, this this little list of all of my jobs. I don't have the ones that I, I worked on before, but this is just one of our um, tools that we use to analyze the data. It's called called a pay station, and I'm going properly into the deep and dark secrets of it. And I'm going to make a new version of that report just to show you something you maybe could do um, if you wanted to do to it. So maybe instead of filtering on um, whatever we'd filtered on before, maybe I want to look at my paperweight, uh, not weight, uh, my job. So you're doing this on the fly now, so it's bound to go well, yeah? Uh, there's, a, there's an element of risk involved in this, but we're, yeah. uh, we're just going to- I've been in your it. demos before, yeah. Just going to trust this will be fine. So basically, I've, I've re-sorted this list. I've changed the look of this list. So I'm just going to forget about delivery date. The previous one was looking at what's due out on the same date. Okay. This one is, is not interested in that. Oh, it's like a dream. This one is now <laughs> grouping stuff into material. So I could say, uh -huh. show me all of the stuff that's on this material. OK, I've got a whole pile of jobs there. Actually, if I found that material out and I want to just look for it, uh, it's, so it could all go horribly wrong. Just click your uh, buttons randomly. Okay, so find me all the 135 gram. I, I've got some gloss and some silk, but, but actually what I could just go and do is click the add everything to a gang button and it's stuck them all into that gang now. Ah. Every single job there. And so then you go it. off and process that. Then, yeah, you're going to do exactly the same way. stuff I did before. But yeah, you could you could change this filter. So so the filter I was using was based on delivery dates, easy for me to find stuff, but you could do it a different way. And and I think kind of the people who do this are less interested in delivery date. Their, their turnarounds are quick, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'd say a lot of them are making the five o'clock carrier, aren't they? So, yeah, well, a lot of them are also like think about your when you're scheduling from you're scheduling from making the five o'clock carrier. So yeah. how late can I push it till I make this gang up? You know, it's two o'clock too late. Do I have to do it at midday? Um, can I do it at four? Will it will it be dry in time? Um, you know, those kind of things is is what gets thought about now. So so I've seen a lot of systems that you can create a gang job, yeah, but really they're just a an envelope. That you stick a load of jobs under and then you have to go and manage that manually out in the factory and go yeah oh yeah don't forget pre-press to put all these jobs up together and don't forget when you've printed them to cut them all down and don't deliver the wrong ones to the wrong people and all that sort of stuff i'm just worrying that's one. so so remember this little picture here this is the plan for our ganged job um, yeah 
up here is our individual job. So, so you're just going to have to trust that this job number 4932 is going to be somewhere in this little pile of jobs across here somewhere. Okay. Who knows? Customer approval, 4932. I just want to make sure you've seen it. So 4932, that same number is up here. So I've, I've proved that we've definitely got that one in there and it's definitely coming together into that gang. Well, 4932, when it was originally its own job, it had all of this production plan. So it had all these times and dates it was going to go and do all these activities. So these are my tasks. These are the dates and the times. If I just refresh this page, because I've now grouped it and ganged it, you'll see this has changed. So these little grayed out items are cutting, pre-press cutting, printing. Um, I'm still doing the soft proofing, the pre-flighting, and I'm still doing the palletizing um, as well. But I'm basically, those things are now grayed out on it. So I'm not controlling the production for the individual elements on the individual jobs. They're controlled up here on this um, main so gang job. She knows about all the processes that are involved. Take out the ones it doesn't need because they're happening on the gang job. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And then you and cut it, it, cut it all down. It goes back to normal, then, as it were. Correct, and it links, and it links it all uh, when it happens as well. So that that's a bit of the uh, of the magic that goes on when when that process happens, um, of creating the new estimate and converting it back to the job. That's that's the bit that keeps all those links with these individual tasks, because each task in our system has got a unique identifier, so we know what it's running with and where it's going with. Um, so, so what? It, what what about the rest of the process then? What, what the rest of the process? Done. Isn't it all done? No, it's not all done. <laughs> so you're going to want to, um, I imagine, artwork. You want to handle artwork with it? It'd be handy to put some artwork in it, yeah. So... Um, Age of printing usually over the margin. It's a bit of magic that we did earlier. So you can get a layout like that that comes out of it. Um, so ah, because it's sending all the layouts to metrics yeah. in the background, putting them in the holes where they need to be, and send it back. So I'm guessing yeah. you could have a look at it there as well. And maybe as a production manager, you'd go, I don't know, about old school Lytho print or something. I was like, oh, I don't want to run those that yeah, way. That green by that blue, we can't have that. The blue's going to yeah. run off into it. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you could do that, yeah, but but fit, fit, ignore the, the, the pretty picture and stuff, but, but think about reality of it. When you're getting these orders in from a web page or from somewhere, you're going to have an artwork um, location with it. Tag it yes. into the file. As it's going through all those processes, the artwork is being sent through as well, That's so cool, that you're yeah. getting useful stuff coming through it as well. You know, we're we're not trying to do this just for a um, a, a part of managing the system. It, it's a whole centered part of of the whole whole thing. Works, so yeah. there's no point saying you've got lights out production except for these bits where you've got to actually go and do stuff. You know, you've got to try and um, get that as as neat as you can there. Um, and that comes even down a little bit further, so you can also start sending um, some of your artwork down to digital front ends as well. So when the schedule says you should go and release artwork, you can go and send artwork. Oh, uh, yeah, because that's quite cool, isn't it? Because that actually looks at the schedule. So if the job goes backwards, it doesn't send the artwork. And if the job comes forward, then it sends the artwork down, yeah? That's yeah, that yeah. one. It's not clever enough to pull the artwork back again, but yeah, yeah, that, yeah. It, will, it will send it down. So, yeah. Which Which... Because like, you go and see operator screens, and sometimes they've got like 600 files all sat on their DFE, and they're having to go down and pick the one out that they want to print next. Whereas we send them down in the order based on the schedule. So they theoretically, 99 times out of 100, they're just going to be picking the first job on the list. Yeah, and it, it is about, um, you know, think about volumes. This is all about this world where we're doing each each printer is doing more print for the same turnover than they were five years ago yeah, that trend has been going on for a long long time anyway but we're hearing from people around the world in different situations who are, who are talking about even maybe a 50 percent increase in job count for no increase in turnover yeah. um, over over a five-year period say so you've got to take out as many points of error as you can when you're processing that many more things with no more staff you've got to you got to make that as easy as possible for people to just be quick and efficient and that's so better. is there any way just thinking out loud to take all my jobs at two o'clock gang them up as best as i possibly can and then send them on <laughs> okay so did you are you secretly going to our dev meetings or, or is, are you just um just really I, 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 I'm just working in the real world david that's all <laughs> <laughs> 
So, um, so this is the time when all of our R and D folks who are listening, I'm sure, are going to start messaging me and saying, "Don't say that. You can't say that. That's not going to happen." Oh yeah, that is going to happen. <laughs> don't don't make promises. Otherwise, we'll have to code it by Friday. <laughs> so, um, things we're thinking about enhancing this with. So at the moment, um, the selection is by the API. It's by some criteria that you can interrogate your database with. But what we really want to try and do, is kind of a next step, is build that in the UI somewhere so that you can choose your criteria yourself and say, right, I want to send all my jobs at two o'clock and I'm happy if my sheet, like look at this sheet, I'm 92% of the sheet is filled. I'm happy if I can fill 90% of the sheet. If you can fill 90% of the sheet with all the jobs at two o'clock, send me that layout back. But if you can't, then wait. And then maybe at four o'clock, I'll accept 70% because I just need to get them done. Ah, uh, cool. Um, so that's the kind of route that we're going into. And, and this is a good point to say, you know, of our many millions of followers, if people have got questions about this and, and ideas for us for the future, then our dev team would love to talk to you as well, um, because we're always looking to make this uh, make this clever. Is that your dog in the background? So you got yeah, some, it's my dog yeah. in the background. He just likes being on TV, whatever it is. It's not even TV, is it? How old am I? On the wireless. <laughs> on the wireless, <laughs> Yeah, tuning in a dial and see if you've got a good signal. So, yeah, I mean, that definitely it's it's a, it's a place where we're talking to our customers. We didn't come up with all this stuff by ourselves. We've got people we're talking to as well to help us um, doing this. Um, so, yeah, if people have got thoughts, uh, now's so, a good time to throw I guess the important bit out of that is that you, we're going to try and make it so you can make up your own rules because there's quite a few places we've been where it's the rules been different, isn't there? That, you know, they've yeah. gone one place will go oh two o'clock panic or the other place will go well we get three day turnarounds so actually we can hold stuff back and only optimize our sheets at some point it's got to deliver and then some people are even printing for stock so if you do i mean stuff like probably stuff like that that's on there that's just general signage yeah you might just be five thousand of them and i suppose that's another thing isn't it to say out loud that if you've got a stock holding and you reach your minimum stock level, then the system will create you a job for the replenishment, which then could go on your gang and print in the top right hand corner of your normal jobs as well, I guess. Yeah, so you could look at like this other layout that's a bit rubbish and you could say just based on the quantities I've got, and you could say actually go and find me other jobs that would fit in that gap and I'll fill the sheet out. Um, that's the kind of stuff. Um, where it starts getting pretty clever to be able to do that. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that is happening in the real world. That's what people are doing. Um, and and we are also, good. it's also worth saying, we do optimize cutting as well within this. So we're, we're not trying to make uh, a million and one cuts uh, either for a digital. Um, uh, yeah. You know, just imagine when you've cut that sheet in half to go and make all those signs come out differently. Now you've got a million cuts to go out. Um, yeah. So we do try and keep those cuts minimal as well. And just to reiterate that what you've got in front of you looks like it's a wide format job or something like that. Yeah, a digital job, let's say that. But the yeah. rules in here for LIFO are completely different, aren't they? Because it's based on LIFO is sort of based less plates. Yeah, so this one you can see, this is digital. You can see, um, if you look, I've got my fire exit sign appearing on two of my layouts. A LIFO layout would never do that because it would yeah. say, um, don't make too many plates. Whereas Run this is making whatever you're going to do. Yeah, yeah. This is, so it's putting these two, in fact, on there, but it's also putting some of them on there because that's less. There's only one sheet needed. So although it's a bad usage, it's only actually using one physical sheet. And to, to put an extra one of those would be a big amount of waste. Um, so yeah, it's 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 thought about that stuff. Is that it? Uh, right. Well, well, one one other thing. Um, oh. So we well, we've asked for, if there's any feedback for people to throw it in the chat here. I didn't see anything that immediately drop in. While, while anybody got any um, questions? So so maybe um, maybe my wife hasn't got any questions today. If she wants to throw no. it over. To well, the dog's got a question, but. I didn't. I didn't really understand it. So if and I have can... some food, it usually means <laughs> with somebody at the door. Might that was the question. But a chance you might want to ask questions is that our user event that's coming up um, soon as well. So we'll put a. And link. where might that be? Um, well, it would be in Manchester, in the United Kingdom, um, uh, the posh bit of Manchester for people who know the UK. You're going to get so much trouble. I am. So many people are going to kill me after this, aren't they? Yeah. So. Um, so we'll put a link in the chat as well if people who aren't already registered want to come along and, and join us. There. It's in a couple of weeks' time. Um, but that's a good chance to talk to some of our product teams, 
um, and some of the um, people um, who are involved in, in developing this and some of our customers who are already using this stuff as well. Um, so, uh, you know, it doesn't come from us in our dark rooms. It comes from real, real people having real problems. Yeah, because some people were saying that they don't want to release the files until they've got it's the same value or uh, they're making a profit on what they charge for it as it were so if they've got I don't know, 18 pound a square meter or whatever it is yeah i need to, be able to recoup my square meters price because i'm getting low value from it yeah so i mean there's all sorts of things you're doing so when you've ganged this stuff and you do your data collection you are going to distribute your cost back to the original child job so you can tell whether they were good or bad um but but your next level is actually pre pre presenting a threshold at which you accept much like when you do a quote what's my minimum margin i'm going to accept what's the minimum um turnover um value added what, whatever metric you want to use that that um makes sense there interesting looks very good can i buy it off you please uh you oh, can you can i shall immediately write you out a contract you can sign it by the end of the week and okay our bot, brilliant our bot will be most happy unless you default on the payment a bit later most potential potential <laughs> as i'm going on holiday next week david i will default um, okay <laughs> yes okay thank you very much so yeah if no one's got any questions for us that was um surprisingly i was expecting some questions on that one but um maybe it's just really simple and easy to understand and we've maybe done it's just you and me on this it's maybe it's just me and you and yeah you've already asked me everything okay goodbye right see you next time Cheers, bye.